credit cards what are they are they good are they bad how do they work in this video we're going to answer those exact questions and explain how to use credit cards to benefit you this video is episode two of our beginner's guide to personal finance where together we'll learn how to not be broke if you missed our first video about budgeting make sure to watch it after this one but without further ado let's talk credit So there are traditional cards and secured cards like Step Black. A traditional credit card essentially allows you to spend money that's not yours. Instead, you use money that is loaned to you from a bank, and it comes with a limit on how much you're allowed to spend. For example, if you have a $5,000 credit limit, you can spend up to $5,000. A secured credit card like Step Black only allows you to spend the money that you deposited into your account. When people hate on credit cards, they're focusing on the fact that if used irresponsibly, traditional credit cards can land you in some serious debt, which is valid. But if you're using a secured credit card or just being responsible, there is almost no downside of using a credit card. Only benefits, like rewards, perks, and the boost to your credit score. Now let's look at the pros and cons, starting with the pros. First off, free money. Most credit cards offer some type of cash back when you make a purchase. For example, the Step Buy card gives you 3% cash back on food and dining. That means if you spend $500 that month on food, at the end of the month, you'll get $15 back. That is a free Chipotle bowl that you wouldn't have if you used a debit card or cash. And that's just the start. Different credit cards have tons of different perks. Again, using the Step Buy card as an example, you can get 8% cash back at Step Black Partners, 5% on your savings, and over $500 in annual perks. Other credit cards have travel perks like airport lounge access or hotel credits, sign up bonuses if you spend a certain amount of money within a given period of time, and even things like free food delivery subscriptions. The perks are endless and change from credit card to credit card. Now let's talk about the cons, because the money that you borrow does come with some strings attached. Typically, if you don't pay off what you owe in full by the due date each month, you'll have to pay interest. And if you miss a payment, your credit score will likely take a hit. Plus, not paying off your credit card entirely can get very expensive very quickly because many credit cards have high interest rates. And if you're not on top of your payments, you can find yourself in tons of debt before you know it. In fact, as of February 2024, the average annual interest rate for a credit card was more than 22%. But let me be straight up with you. It's so easy to not experience any of these cons. Just don't spend money that you don't have and don't miss a payment. That's it. Turn on auto pay or get a secured credit card. It's not rocket science. Another important aspect to understand about credit cards is how they affect your credit score which impacts many areas of your life. Want to rent a nice apartment? You generally need a good credit score. Looking to buy a car or a house? A good credit score can save you tens of thousands of dollars. Even if you just want a fancier credit card with better perks, your credit score will often determine if you get approved or not. Your credit score is a number between 300 and 850 that indicates how trustworthy you are when it comes to borrowing money and paying it back. It's basically a responsibility score, and it's taken into consideration essentially every time you need to make a large purchase. For example, when you want a new house, unless you're Jeff Bezos, you probably don't have all of it in cash, so you'll need to take out a loan. Your credit score shows the bank how responsible you are with your credit and therefore how much risk they're taking on by lending you this money. The higher your score, the more responsible you seem and thus they don't have to charge you as much interest for the loan. But if your score is relatively low, they're theoretically taking on more risk and need to make more money for that risk to be justified. Your interest rate will affect how much money you end up paying, and especially when it comes to large purchases like a house, the difference can be upwards of tens of thousands of dollars. And if you're young and buying a house isn't even on your radar, you're so lucky that you're watching this video now, because building your credit score can take years. There are five things that determine your credit score. Payment history, the amount you owe, the length of your credit history, your credit mix, and your new credit. Let's go through what each one is, starting with your payment history. 
The first 35% and the most influential part of your credit score is your payment history. Basically, whether or not you've made your payments on time. Lucky for us, it is the largest part of our credit score and the easiest to get right. All you have to do is never miss a payment. And I want to emphasize, never miss a payment. Because it will significantly drop your score. And it will take a decent amount of time to get it back up. But this is easy to do because like I mentioned before, you can just set up auto pay or get a secured credit card. And yes, paying the minimums each month still counts. Next up is the amount you owe, which consists of 30% of your credit score. This refers to how much money you owe in relation to your total credit limit. Your aim is to have a balance of less than 30% of your total credit limit. Again, this should not matter to you because you should be paying off your credit cards every month. But for the sake of example, let's say you have a total credit limit of $10,000. You want to make sure you don't hold a balance of over $3,000. The reason for this is that if you're using too much of your available credit, this may indicate to the banks that you're at a higher risk of not being able to pay back the money. Also notice that I've been saying total credit limit because they take into account your limits across all of your credit cards. For example, if you have one credit card with a $3,000 limit and another credit card with a $7,000 limit, your total credit limit is $10,000. Moving on, the next 15% is the length of your credit history. This one is simple. The longer you've had a credit card, the more it positively affects your score. If you're lucky, you already have a credit card, and that's great. If not, don't stress, just get one ASAP. Most credit cards require you to be at least 18 years old to get one, but not the step black. You can get a card when you're 13 and start building your credit history ASAP. In fact, the average step user has an initial credit score of 721 when they turn 18. The next 10% of your credit score comes from your credit mix. On paper, it's better to have different types of loans like credit card debt, student loans, car loans, etc. because it shows that you're responsible enough to handle multiple obligations. That being said, don't go out and take more loans that you don't need just to improve your credit mix. You'll potentially end up paying interest on that money and you'll just have another payment you need to worry about. In my opinion, you shouldn't worry about your credit mix too much. It's only 10% of your score and the pros of being debt free far outweigh the cons of having a limited credit mix. Finally, the last category is your new credit. Basically, whenever someone needs to know your credit score, whether that be for a loan or applying for a credit card, etc., they will need to do a hard inquiry. This can ding your credit score a bit, but as long as you're not doing it too often within a short period, it shouldn't really matter. The effect on your credit score should be pretty negligible. So there you have it. Credit cards can be awesome if you use them responsibly. They offer rewards, perks, and help you build a solid credit score. Just remember to pay off your balance in full, keep your spending in check, and never miss a payment. Building credit early is super important because it gives you a head start in establishing a strong credit history. The earlier you start, the more time you have to build and improve your credit score, making it much easier to reach your financial goals. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and stay tuned for our next video where I'll teach you step by step how to invest as a beginner. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.